Company presents Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. There it is. I've got it. I've got it. Let me see it. Here you are. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. My friend, you have just made us independently wealthy. Many men have died in the past because of this. And unless we're extremely cautious, you and I will be added to the already long list of its victims. Come, hurry. Here's another exciting half hour with Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Diamond Detective Agency... Where the blue of my eyes meets the gold in your wallet. Oh, that's pretty terrible. Hmm, you may be right. You admit it. Yes, I've seen your wallet. Oh, Rick. <laughs> Hello, Helen, baby. Hi. What are you doing? Oh, just finished cleaning out my desk. Oh, find anything interesting? Mm-hmm. Sam Spade. Guess he hadn't paid his rent. Oh, you're impossible. So, Sam. Well, I'm not going to try to keep up with this. Am I going to see you tonight? Oh, sure, sure, darling. I... Oh, uh, wait a minute, honey. Hmm? Company just walked in. Oh. Something I can do for you, my friend? Are you Richard Diamond? That's right. Client, Rick? No, I don't know, honey. I'll call you back. Please, Mr. Diamond. I haven't got much time. Okay, what's on your mind? This package. Here, take it. And keep it for me until... Hey, hey, what's wrong? Hide it. I'm being followed. Hide it. Now, oh, take it easy. Oh, what's the matter? Hey, fella, come on. Now, what's... Oh, swell. Precinct Police Station, Sergeant Otis. Otis, let me talk to the lieutenant. Is this Diamond? No, it's Ponder, and I think I've been doped. Now put the lieutenant on the line. Oh. Homicide, Lieutenant Levinson. Walt, Rick. Oh, no, it's only 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Nobody gets killed at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. You better check up on your statistics. There's a guy in my office who makes a liar out of him. What? Yeah, lying right here in front of my desk. He's dead? Well, if he isn't, he's got a lazy heart. Maybe he just fainted. Maybe he's suffering from some kind of a shock. Maybe he's got some terrible disease and he'll give it to you. Walt, if this guy isn't dead, he's sure going to have a hard time explaining the bullet hole in his back. Don't touch anything. Can't he even scratch my head? Oh, you know what I mean. Now, all I did was lock the door. Now, get over here. Knock three times and say, Ricky loves Walter, and I'll open up. Uh, what did you lock the door for? Well, because this guy came in and gave me a... Gave you a what? Wait a minute, Walt. Come on, what are you mumbling about? Will you shut up? Someone's trying to get in the door. I'll see you when you get here, Walt. I have one of those locks that any skeleton key would fit, and that was exactly what my visitor was using. He opened the door. I moved back against the wall as the door swung in. My visitor was a young, well-dressed man, about five feet eight or nine, red hair, nose full of freckles, and on top of the nose, a pair of black rim glasses. There was a big bulge under his coat that he started reaching for just as I rolled his arm around behind him. Oh, you're backing me off! No, no, not yet. I still got a little way to go. No! Just making you more comfortable. Now, now, I'll take this big gun. It must weigh you down. You can't do this to Oh, sure I can. See, I just pushed a little. No, no! Just locking the door again. Now sit on in that chair. My arm. Well, I'll be happy you still got it. Now, what are you doing patty-footing it around here, using a pass key to get into my office? I got the wrong office. Look, Sonny, you see that over there? Oh, what is it? It's a guy, and it's very dead. Oh, I'll send some flowers. Make it enough for a duet. Someone else gonna die? Someone else is gonna get pretty close to it if I don't get the answers I want. Well, I'll see what I can find out. Oh! 
That's to see how fast you can talk. I don't have to talk to you. I don't have to talk to nobody. What a bad... You're going to be sorry for that. You're mixed up. Let me straighten you out. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, then let's have it. What were you doing busting in here? What do you know about the dead guy? I don't know nothing about him. What gave you the idea you could break into my office? I found out the door was locked. I didn't want to wait around in the hall. You got a permit to carry this gun? Well, of course I have. Let's see it. I haven't got it with me. Oh, well, then we'd better start at the beginning. Dirty <laughs> rotten! Come on, Ricky loves Walter. Now open this door, I'll have all his ticket in. Who's that? That's the law, Buster. Now you stay put while I let the big fat policeman in. Come on, come on, Diamond. Should I look, Oh, not with your head. Well, greetings. Uh, come on in, Walt. I got somebody. Hey, what the... Oh, I had somebody. Some guy jumped through Diamond's window. Uh, it's eight floors up. Yeah, but there's a roof only one floor below. Look off the glass. There he is down there. Hey, you, you, come back here. He ducked behind that sign. Oh, let's uh, get off of my back. Oh, yeah. oh, well, he's gone. That's that. What did he do? Busted into the office. Hey, is that dead guy over there? What does that look like, a bear rug? Oh, you think the guy who jumped out of your window has something to do with the dead man? I don't know. He had this gun on him. Well, why didn't you take a shot at him? Because if you'll notice, I've been holding it by the barrel. I wanted you to have the nice little old fingerprints. Oh. Yeah, oh. Why didn't you take a shot at him? Why didn't I? Yeah, little town, why didn't you? You shut up. Well, Walt, I don't know what he was, who he was, or what he'd done. Why should I take a shot at him? Uh, Lieutenant... Otis, I told you to shut up. Now, let's take a look at the dead man. Looks like he's been shot in the back. Yeah. You said he came in to give you something, Ray. That's right. This package right here. And what's in it? I well, have a look yet. Wrapped in today's newspaper. Well, what in the... Hey, some kind of doll or something. Looks like it's carved out of ivory. Funny looking thing. Look at all those arms. Must be oriented. You know what it is? No more than you do. The guy just came oh, in and... It sounds like the wagon, Lieutenant. Yeah, when the coroner gets here, Rick, we'll go down to the office and see if we can get any identification on the guy who jumped out of your window. Okay. Here's a wallet off the dead guy. Now, let me see. Yeah, 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 Lieutenant. Mm, social security card. Name's William Logan. Hey, here's something. Guy's a merchant sailor. Here's his card. We'll check these things. Look, Walt, Walt you've you got to wait around for the coroner's report. I've got a date with Helen later, so I'll go over to my place and get cleaned up. Then I'll meet you at the station, huh? Okay. Hey, where are you going with that statue? Well, the dead man, William Logan, gave it to me to keep. That's evidence. But it's also something from a client. Client? He give you a fee? No, but he wanted me to have this thing. It looks like he died trying to get it to me. So he's a client until I find out what this is all about. Ain't he noble? Noble, schmoble. That thing is still evidence. I'll take good care of it. Now, Diamond, you come back here. Walt... What do I always say when I leave you like this? What? What do I always say? Why, uh, bye. Bye. I left Walt and headed for my flat on East 51st. I wasn't about to try and figure the whole thing out because it was still an early case. And sometimes cases like that can stretch out into two or three murders before things begin to fit together. That's the way you got to figure. One guy dead could lead to another, so you walk on eggs for a while and make sure it's not going to be you. I got to my flat and went in. Smoked a few cigarettes. Looked at the carved ivory figure that William Logan had given me. It looked like a woman sitting cross-legged with all of her six arms outstretched. I gave it a good going over, but couldn't find anything unusual. So I put it on the piano and went in and started to shave. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what is it? Okay, okay. When people don't answer, it makes me wonder. I crossed the living room, remember the ivory figure on the piano. So just to be safe, I lifted the top of the piano and put the statue down inside. Then I moved over to the door. Mr. Diamond? That's right. I'd like to talk with you. I have a business proposition. Is there any money involved? Quite a good deal. Well, you've just made an appointment. Come in, Mr. Uh... Titus. Leopold Titus, Esquire. He came in all right, and he had the duck to do it. He must have been a good seven feet tall, and even with his heavy overcoat, he couldn't have weighed over 140. He reminded me of a king-sized case of malnutrition. 
He took in the whole apartment with one fast look and slid into a chair, rested his elbows, locked his hands, and put them under his pointed chin. It appears you've been shaving. I've interrupted. Oh, no, no. Split personality. Never touch this side. Mr. Diamond, I haven't much time. Good, good. Now, you uh, said something about money. Hmm. I can see that this is a subject which meets with your approval. Well, it sets off an emotional reaction, shall we say. I can't stand goosebumps for more than a couple of minutes, so let's get to it, huh? Yes, indeed, indeed. Mm. Mr. Diamond, I am prepared to pay $10,000 for Kali. Oh, well, that's dandy, but I'm not a booking agent. What kind of an act does Kali do? 10000 Mr. Diamond. Look, to me, Kali is the name of a dog. Kali! Oh, okay, so he got mixed up with a French poodle. 10000 and that's my top price. You know, of course, you're running me right into a nervous breakdown... I get the shakes when someone changes five bucks. Mr. Diamond, I want Kali. I will have Kali, whether I pay you the 10000 or not. Look, Mr. Titus, really, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I certainly hoped you'd be more sensible than this. I know that William Logan came to see you this afternoon. Oh? And I know for a fact that he had Kali with him. Well, did he have it when he left my office? I couldn't see. Mr. Logan was under a sheet. Now, either the police have Kali or you do. I'd like very much to know. Uh, maybe I can help you if you'll tell me exactly what this Kali is. I made an offer of $10,000, Mr. Diamond. That's a great deal of money, but it does not entitle you to play 20 questions. Okay. Now, if you don't mind, Mr. Titus, I'd like to finish shaving. As I explained, Mr. Diamond, I don't have much time. Well, then, good afternoon, Mr. Titus. No, I'm afraid not. Charles! Yes, Mr. Titus. Well, well, well. I thought maybe you'd cut your throat when you jumped out of my window. I hear you got rather ambitious with Charles, Mr. Diamond. We turned such a pretty color when you slap him around. I told you you'd be sorry for that. Yes, and indeed you will, Mr. Diamond, unless you tell me where I can find Kali. You can go to the devil. I'm afraid the trip would be unpleasant and premature. However, I'm sure your passage might be taken care of. <laughs> Show him your new gun, Charles. Of course. Now you sit down, Diamond. Where is Kali, Mr. Diamond? And you know very well what I'm talking about. The small hand-carved ivory statue. Sorry, Titus. Yes, and so am I. I deplore the sight of blood. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Titus. Just turn your back. Yes, Charles. Excellent suggestion. Do you have a wireless, Diamond? No, but I got a lovely bunch of coconuts. Oh, very funny. All right, where's your wireless? Hey, uh, never mind, Charles. Mr. Diamond, has a piano. Yeah. I can manage to raise or lower the volume as the groans dictate. I can make a lot of noise. My old piano teacher assured me I could do the same. Yeah. Now, go ahead, Charles. Hey, now, wait a minute. Oh, you... Where is Kali, Diamond? Oh, nuts. Again, Mr. Titus? Again, Charles. Are you using your fist, Charles? Oh, well, yes. Well, use the barrel of your gun. We haven't much time. All right. Oh, now, wait a minute. You... Oh. oh, it's not a very good piano, Mr. Diamond. Mm. That's an old kazoo over in the drawer. Kali Diamond, I want the statue. Well, for $10,000, don't you think I'd give it to you? No. Oh, really, Mr. Diamond, this piano is in a deplorable condition. So's Diamond, Mr. Titus. He looks terrible. Shame, but unavoidable. Keep working on him, Charles, until he decides to confide in us. Where's the statue, Diamond? Now? Okay. Oh. 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 NBC is bringing you Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Young man? Mm. Young man? Mm. Oh. Who, who says so? That is good. You can hear me? Oh, I can hear who? Try and sit up. <sighs> You look quite uncomfortable. Yeah, you can make book on it. There, that's better. Now, take your time. I want your answers to be correct. 
Well, he got me into a sitting position, and when things finally stopped jumping around, I got a good look at him. Titus wasn't around. Neither was Charles, his little butcher. The room was dark except for a single light in the corner. The man standing before me was short, dressed in a tailored blue suit, his dark face standing out against a white turban on his head. He didn't smile or blink his eyes. I am Ahmed Benif. Oh, thanks. I'd introduce myself, but I've been pushed around so much I could be anybody. Mr. Titus and his man Charles can be very persuasive. Well, a gallon of blood and a few broken arms, anyone can do it. Where did they go? Uh, I got tired and took a nap. Did you give them Kali? Oh, no. Now, look, It is I... a very simple question. I know that a man came to your office with the statue. So does half of New York. I have been following Titus because I know the statue was stolen from him and that he would do anything to get it back. He led me to your office, then he led me here. If he has the statue, he has undoubtedly returned to his flat where he is preparing to leave for a place of safety. Well, I don't know whether he's got the statue or not. That is unfortunate. I have no more time to question you. I shall have to assume that Mr. Titus has the statue and kill you. He was like a cat. Before I could push myself to a standing position, he was around and back, and I felt something drop over my head and draw tight around my windpipe. Oh, I'm sorry, but I must know. If you will not tell me, I shall have to strangle oh. you. Oh. Ah. Come on. Come on. Ricky loves Walter. Now open this door. Oh. We shall meet again, Mr. Diamond. Come on, Rick. I know you're in there. You were supposed to be down at the station an hour ago. Oh, oh, shut up. I don't want to break it down, but I will. Yeah, but I will, but I will. Okay, keep your badge on. Come on, step on it. <coughs> ah. Well, blue eyes. Where's Diamond? No. Yeah. What in the world? Believe me, Walt, I don't know. You look off. Yeah, I feel like I've been playing in a wind tunnel with blocks of cement. What happened? Look, before I go into it, hmm, tell me what you found out. We better take care of you first. Yeah, it'll have to wait. Things keep going on like they have been. It's only a matter of time until someone else gets killed. Now, what did you find out? Well, you know that gun you gave me? Yeah, the one I got from Charles. Is that his name? Yeah, what about the gun? It was the one that killed the guy in your office. That's why you've got to get down to the station and try to identify this guy from the gallery. By the time I do that, he'll be out of the country. How do you know that? Ahmed Benif told me. Who the devil is Ahmed Benif? The guy with a turban tried to strangle me. Now, don't you start that. I'm not starting anything. He beat it out the back. If you hadn't knocked on that door, I'd have been strangled to death. He's the guy who beat you up like this? No. Charles did. Because Mr. Leopold Titus Esquire told him to. Leopold Titus Esquire? What are you trying to do? That's right. He was looking for Kali in the first... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Kali? That's a dog. No, no, no. Well, it isn't. It's an ivory statue. Oh, my gosh. Now oh, what? Wait a minute. He's lost his mind. What are you doing in that piano? I'm looking for the statue. I put it in here. Please, Rick, slow down. Uh-oh. Yeah, gone. Well, Titus has got it. He was playing the piano. Please, Rick, please. Walt, what did you find out about the dead man? William Logan? Yeah, what did you find out? He was a merchant seaman. Landed yesterday on the Queen of India out of Calcutta. Ah, uh-huh. thanks, Walt. Where do you think you're going? Check with the steamship company. <laughs> I stumbled out of my place, looking like an ad for ground sirloin, and grabbed a cab. On the way to the India steamship lines, I tried putting two and two together. The little statue, Kali, was a reason for the whole thing. One man was dead because of it. Everybody who was connected with the case was perfectly willing to kill anyone else at any time. Mr. Leopold Titus wanted it, so did one Ahmed Benif. Titus and his boy Charles evidently tailed William Logan, merchant seaman, to my office... And somewhere along the line, Charles shot him. Ahmed Benif was tailing the whole bunch. Two and two? Well, maybe, but I still needed some answers. A cab pulled up in front of the East India Steamship offices, and I went in. A nice little girl with a nice little uh, personality showed me the passenger list of the India Queen, and sure enough, Mr. Leopold Titus and a Mr. Charles Freely, first class. I thanked the girl, told her I'd send her a picture when my face got back to normal... And I headed for the docks in the customs office. I needed an address on Titus. 
and I knew that he must have signed a manifest at customs. He had. And five minutes later, I was back in my cab headed for the residence of Mr. Leopold Titus Esquire, Kew Gardens, Long Island. It was a big, sprawling house, and by the time I got there, my watch was leaning on seven o'clock. I paid the cabbie with my last 20 bucks and started toward the only light burning at home. The light was coming from a downstairs room with tall French doors, so I went over the balcony and moved up for a better look. I got the look and went in fast. Titus! Uh, Mr. Diamond, I'm afraid you're a bit late. The place was a wreck. Titus was half sitting, half lying against the couch. There was blood all over him. Charles Freely was stretched out on the floor near the towering bookcases. He was looking up, staring, but not seeing a thing. Around his throat was a long, white length of cloth. <laughs> greed, Mr. Diamond. The price for greed comes extremely high, as you can well see. I'm at Beneath. Oh, you've met. Yes, I'm at Beneath. Quite as proficient with a gun as well as a strangling cord. I'll call an ambulance. No, no, Mr. Diamond. I'm having a twinge of conscience, so hear me out. You must find Beneath and stop him. Does he have Kali? Yes, he has Mother Kali. Mother Kali? She is known by her followers. Tugs, Mr. Diamond. Have you ever heard of Tugs? No, I haven't. What are they? A cult long since believed extinct in India... An army of assassins banded together under the guidance of Mother Kali. Assassins? Yes, Mr. Diamond. Trained in the art of strangling. Oh, uh, oh yes, I read something about that in a history book. That was a long time ago. Correct. They were suppressed by the British in 1830. You're trying to tell me they've started all over again? Absolutely. What about that little statue? Belongs to the man who has reorganized the tugs. Symbol of his leadership, passed down through generations from one leader to the next. And to a collector worth a fortune. And you're a collector? A businessman. But I know a great many collectors who would pay a sizable fortune to get a hold of that statue. And Ahmed Badif is one of those tugs. Indeed he is. Where did you get the statue? Charles. Stole it for me from Ahmed Benif. What about William Logan, the merchant seaman? Uh, board ship from Calcutta. Logan discovered its value and stole it from us. Indeed, Ahmed Benif is a tug. The statue is his. Passed down by his father and his father before him. I'll call the law. Mr. Diamond, please see that Charles is buried next to me. A mixed-up boy, but... A good friend. Sure. Now, uh, operator, Put give me... on the phone, Mr. Diamond. Put it down. Well, Beneath, this isn't very smart, is it? On the contrary, Mr. Diamond, it is very smart. I have the statue. And now you are the only man who could tell the authorities that once again the tugs are rising all over India. How did you know I'd be here? I did not know. As I was leaving, I saw your cab pull up. I listened to everything Mr. Titus had to say. I was surprised. I thought surely he would be dead by now. And now you kill me. Most assuredly. Ahmed couldn't see it because as he came closer to me, his back was to Titus. And Titus was pulling himself painfully across the room, trying to get to the dead body of Charles Freely. I didn't know what he was up to, but I, I had to give him time to make it. I deplore the use of a gun, but in some cases... You'd I'd rather think... strangle your victim. That is my religion, Mr. Diamond. Unfortunately, in some cases, I must take other steps. Well, you've sure taken some pretty big ones. I assure you, it has been most necessary. All because of a little statue? All because of what that little statue represents. I rule the tugs, Mr. Diamond, and Kali is a symbol of my leadership. As you have seen, I would do anything to retain its possession and keep faith with my people. So now, again, my time is short. <laughs> Indeed, it was short, wasn't it, Mr. Diamond? Indeed. 
I'm certainly happy that Charles had his new gun. Thanks, Titus. A pleasure. And now, quickly, two favors, Mr. Diamond. What are they? First, take the statue of Kali and destroy it. I must have your word. You've got it? Uh, the second, I... <laughs> I wish your honest opinion. I'll try. Once you directed me to the devil, and I said that it was a premature crossing. Yes. I... I fear that perhaps now it is not your honest opinion, Mr. Diamond. Do... Do you think he could really stand the competition? <laughs> Titus. Titus. Well, it'll sure be a good race anyway. How do you feel, Rick? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Pretty good, I guess. Want to tell me about it? No, I, um, I don't think so, honey. You just get confused with an old argument about right and wrong. Well, I wish you weren't so unhappy. Unhappy? Oh, honey, you said a bad word. I'm just mad about my bruises. Oh, I think the colors are lovely. Mm, well, so do I. I've just got to be careful about wearing plaid. Oh, Rick. Mm, pretty bad, huh? Yeah. Why don't you just sing something? All right, dear. I'd love to. Bye-bye, baby. Remember you're my baby. When you give me... Rick. Did you hear that? I certainly did. He's back. That's the grouch in the next building, isn't it? <laughs> yes, he's been out of town for a rest. Oh, my God. What's his name? Mr. Lumpkin. Oh, uh, good evening, Mr. Lumpkin. Oh, antisocial, huh? You are my sunshine. You are my sunshine. You are my sunshine. You are my... Good evening, Mr. Lumpkin. All right, all right. Good evening. Well, now, that's better. Now, what would you like to hear? The sound of you cutting your throat. You're fighting me. Oh, I'd love to with a machine gun. Tepper, tepper, tepper. Control yourself. I may ask questions later. Oh, Good evening, Mr. Lumpkin. You stay out of this. Good evening, Miss Asher. My, you're looking well. Oh, oh, thank you. So are you. If he leans out any further, he'll be hanging by his heels. Now, you just stay right there, Mr. Lumpkin. We've got a lovely surprise for you. Yes? Yes. Now, sing something nice, Rick. Love it, love it. Bye-bye, baby. Remember you're my baby When they give you the eye Although I know that you care Won't you write and declare That though on the loose You are still on the square I'll be gloomy But send that rainbow to me then my shadows will fly Though you'll be gone for a while I know that I'll still be smiling With my baby by and by With my baby by and by Well, how do you take it? How is that, Mr. Lumpkin? Oh, Miss Asher, it's impossible for me To express my feelings at this moment Especially when a lady is present. He didn't like it. Well, what do you expect from a clarinet player? Come on, let's case the icebox. You have just heard Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Gypsy Rose Lee visits Duffy's Tavern tomorrow on NBC. NBC. 